So which way do you think we should go? Well, we should... You always start with going west. Like, we should be going to London first. I don't know. I think Mississauga would be... No. Yeah, but the 401 can be busy. Oh, hang on, hang on. Oh, I think we started. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Indwell and our virtual road trip. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Jeff Nevin. I'm the CEO here at Indwell. Um, actually, this month I'm celebrating 20 years at Indwell. And for a good chunk of that, for the last six years, uh, my co-host here has been my boss. So it's always a little risky going on a road trip with your boss. But, well, I'll let you introduce yourself. Yeah, my name is Alice Plagius. Uh, I am a very scary boss. <laughs> I am the president of the board of Indwell. Um, I also am privileged to be executive director of Helping Hands Street Mission, which is in our community here in Hamilton. Um, I, I mention it because uh, we do have some overlap. Uh, some of the tenants that work or that uh, live at Indwell Homes here in Hamilton um, are also volunteers at Helping Hands, and um, other tenants we get to walk alongside them in friendship support uh, at Helping Hands. So it's it's just a beautiful mix of, of yeah life together. So it's great that you're joining us on this virtual road trip here tonight. Uh, there's a lot of you. Already uh, this morning there was 540 households who, uh, and representing over 900 people who are on this live uh, road trip right now with us. And we're going to be traveling across uh, southwest and southern Ontario across our sites. And I'm just delighted to uh, have you join us. Jeff, you were going to mention something about the speedometer that people are seeing at the bottom of the screen. You might want to share something right. about that. So today, because we're on a road trip, we have a speedometer rather than a thermometer. And uh, the speedometer, just keep an eye on that. Uh, you'll be seeing it, uh, hopefully, going up throughout the evening. It represents the donations that are coming in uh, throughout this evening. And you'll notice that it's already up a little bit. So just pay attention to that as, as we get going. Just want to... Um encourage everybody that we do encourage speed here we we're we, not about slow here, we right and speed. we're not going to worry too much about breaking a speed limit we're actually going to kind of celebrate encourage that. celebrate breaking speed limits okay we're not going to worry about police officers or anything like that so we're tonight. moving now we're, it says but we're yeah, not speeding yet yeah no we're, we're still chugging along but we are going to get there um those of you who um registered early um, got a package in the mail, and um, there is some recipes in there that hopefully some of you got to, uh, to make already. So the Roadworthy Trail Mix bars, um, and also the drinks, the lemonade and the tea, and we hope that some of you um, prepared those in advance, and uh, there are also ways to keep your hands busy too. Um, there is a model car that you can cut out, as well as a bingo game that you can play. If you didn't get your package, it's not too late, though. You can totally go to our website and print off the bingo game. The bingo game, you just follow along, cross out items as you find them throughout the evening. So, yeah, print that off if you don't have it yet, or take it out and start filling it out. Welcome, everyone. We're just so excited to have you here. And... We are going to uh, drive over to Thelma Eisen's place, as she will lead us in prayer. Well, hello, everybody. My name is Thelma Eisen, and I live at Rudy Hills Commons, and I have lived here for five years. Uh, funny arrangement of how that all happened. Jeff Nevin um, had called me. I was working as a pastor here in Hamilton. And uh, he had heard some rumblings that I would love to live in a home like Indwell and be someone in the building. And anyway, he had, they had bought this lot and uh, he approached me and said, would I consider living once it was built in a building and being an emergency person through the night that I would have a home here? And I jumped on it. In the time that the building was being built, though, I was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, early onset Alzheimer's. And so I couldn't do my job anymore. Pastoring, you should remember people's names and their family, and a lot of that was going. But anyway, July, five years ago, I moved in to my apartment right here 
207. And uh, I have had the best time, the best experience, along with Alzheimer's. Um, but it, I am so happy here, and I feel like one of a big family. And so I'm so thankful Jeff reached out to do that. God nudged him, I'm sure, and uh, it's been great. Anyway, I'm here to pray and also just to wish you all a wonderful celebration on your road trip with my Alzheimer's. Um, some of the people that live in here have been great help to me. Um, and I'm talking to the other tenants, great friends, um, really good friends. It's just been home. And to have home and to have friends right near you changes your life, uh, makes it better, even though I have something that's not so great. Sometimes, most of the time, we laugh about my forgetting, and then there's people who help. Um, so I want to pray, because God has done such wonderful things through Indwell. So will you join me? Oh, Lord God, thank you for all you have done to bring about Indwell. Thank you for all of the people who turned the idea of Indwell into a thriving, growing, life-giving reality. The idea became an action. When I read about Jesus and his ways and his teachings, the way he consistently shared love and compassion, I see Indwell. God, you must love seeing all of the new tenants experience their first day in their own home, experiencing the support and the generous care and compassion from staff, living into the reality of having a home that feels like a home. For many, it's like being given a life you never felt possible. It's such a beautiful place. I love my apartment. It's a healing space. It's my cat, Louise. I'm Thelma, that's Louise. A healing space, a safe space, a place to encounter the love and support of others and realize the source behind it all is you, the loving God who knows each of us intimately and desires for all of us to live knowing they are loved and they matter. And it's safe to open your heart to God and let the sun shine in. It's safe to open yourself to other people here in and well. God, continue to bless and well. Continue to bring and provide the support they need to provide more people with a home and hope. Amen. Thanks, Thelma and Louise. Uh, deeply appreciate your longtime friendship, Thelma, and thank you for leading us again here. Here at Indwell, we're a Christian charity that develops affordable housing communities for people seeking health, wellness, and belonging. We have a deep belief that everyone needs a home and a place to belong. Our vision, we hold on to and we share, and I think that's why you're joining us tonight, is because you too believe in hope and homes for all. This mission, this vision comes following Jesus and his uh, example of care and compassion, and it guides us into our values. Maybe you don't use uh, that title of Christian for yourself, but you're here today because you believe in these values. And uh, I'm glad you're here. Sometimes I say we have a big tent. Uh, today we're going to say we have a big bus uh, to join us. And so I'm glad you're here. These values that hold us together, that drive us, the, the values of dignity, the values of love and hope that we share. That's why 
we believe together and we're on this mission, on this movement together. That's why you're joining us today. That's why we're here after all these years, uh, <clears throat> because we believe in this together. I also want to pause and acknowledge that whenever we're talking about land and real estate and buildings and places uh, that uh, were recent settlers, I am, um, and uh, that people have occupied this land before us. And we recognize that indigenous people have occupied uh, and nations uh, have, have, have been on this land far before uh, most of us. Right here where I am today, uh, recognize that this is a land that, that uh, the, the neutral people and uh, the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabe uh, people have occupied long before me and uh, our immigrant family. And so we recognize that and we're just delighted that we continue to partner with uh, indigenous nations on finding solutions uh, to homelessness and to housing today. So we're really grateful uh, for that uh, partnership as well. And uh, talking about land and talking about places, um, I think you'll be delighted to hear where some of the people are joining us today. Well, you know where you're from, but other people might not. And uh, so some of the places uh, include all the way on the west coast, British Columbia. We have folks tuning in from Abbotsford, Vancouver, Nanaimo in Alberta. We, we, we thank you from tuning in Edmonton, Leduc, Eastbrooks, and in Winnipeg, Manitoba. As we move east into Ontario, there's a lot of folks tuning in from Ontario, and we thank you. And all the way east to, to Ottawa, thanks for tuning in to, to our road trip tonight. Fredericton, New Brunswick, thanks. Uh, Brookside, Nova Scotia, St. John, Newfoundland. And Alice, there's actually some international viewers tonight too. Really? So we have uh, some folks from the US, Chicago, thanks. Uh, Mexico City, Mexico. And, um, and Santiago, Chile. Uh, so wow. th this is great that you've joined us. And I have my phone throughout the evening. And so I'm gonna get messages that keep coming in and they're gonna tell me about different things. And one of the things I'm hearing about right now is about our tenants and the number of our tenants that are joining in as well. So a special welcome to you, our tenants in each of our locations. Um, we're all one community together, working, striving together. So we're deeply appreciative for that. If you wanna join in on this chat, uh, you can do that. Just um, join in on the chat, you'll see it there. Uh, or you can use your social media, maybe Twitter. Use the hashtag Indwell Road Trip, and then we'll be able to find each other. That's a great way that we can, we can do that. I know that some of you have planned viewing parties, including, I think there's a whole street that invited people, charged admission. Thank you for that. And uh, so if you, you want to take a picture of that, put it up on social media, send it to us. We would love to see that. Um, and, and, and we'll share in that. If, if you want to say where you're from, other places, great. Chime in with that. That would be fun as well. And uh, maybe you can show your beverage or your snacks that you made for, for the road trip. And that'll just add to some of the, the, the fun along the way. So these fundraisers have uh, always been opportunities for us to celebrate with our community. Um, and um, one of the really important things about these fundraisers is the financial support that Indwell is able to uh, receive from everybody who takes part in this. So our goal this year um, is to raise as much money as uh, we normally have in uh, the different three or four different signature events we've always normally had before we had to turn virtual. So $70,000 is what our, our speedometer is hoping to get to. And, and I have full confidence that we will be able to get to that and, and perhaps even perhaps even beyond. Uh, we definitely know that all of the funds uh, that we will receive will make a difference, will change lives. And so, yeah, this is a fun, exciting adventure that we are on together today. Last year we were here and Alice, you challenged us to break that target and we actually went speeding past that, uh, that new goal. 
And so I'm hopeful uh, tonight that uh, a similar opportunity might just happen here today. <clears throat> there's a number of ways that you can donate. Um, there's a way that we can show together that we believe in hope and homes for all. And you can see them there on your screen. You can go to our, our, our website, that's open. Uh, you can go to our phone uh, line. Right now we have uh, staff waiting to talk to you, hear from you. And uh, those, those phone lines will be open till nine o'clock tonight, 1-866-529-0454. You can send a pledge over email if that's, if that's the way you wanna do it. Or you can use one of these cards that we sent along with your registration and uh, there you can mail that in at any time. So that's, that's a bunch of ways that you can do it. Uh, we're always willing to find out new ways if you have other ways that you'd like to donate as well. So you'll see um, when you next see our speedometer that we've already gained some speed. People have already been giving. Uh, this morning we already received some donations and uh, we're already super excited and thankful for that. And we look forward to making that, th uh, that speedometer just um, move on and break that, that, sound, that sound barrier, perhaps. So thank you very much for joining us here tonight. As we move from one location to the next, we won't be able to hit every program, but we'll be going through the regions on our road trip. And the first stop is with our special guest. Well, she'll introduce herself and you'll get to know more about her. So let's start the road trip with TJ. So you're getting a little taste of what's uh, up for tonight. And oh, wow, look at this. Look at the speedometer. It's already jumped up to $20,000. Thank you so much. I think we're starting to get some momentum here. We're starting to get some speed. And uh, well, you started this road trip already well before the rest of us. <laughs> and um, actually, you've been volunteering at Indwell for quite some time now. Yeah, since 2016. So I would have been 10 or 11. Wow, and I think you came with your family. I did, yes. <laughs> yeah, that was great. And uh, this is just a shout out to all the volunteers that we have at Indwell. Um, in so many ways, you keep things running, you keep the relationships going and building into people, loving people, living out our, our values. So thank you for that. And, and TJ, so um, I think it was about two and a half years ago when you became an ambassador for, for Indwell, and uh, I know you're a student, but on top of being a student, what else do you do? Yeah, so I'm actually an actor based in Toronto. Uh, you might have seen some of my shows, such as The Umbrella Academy on Netflix or X-Men Apocalypse. Uh, so I absolutely love my work, I love what I do, uh, but I'm also a dancer, and I am an avid reader. <laughs> I heard that you read a lot. I do read a lot, like probably four books this week. Four books this week. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. That is awesome. So thank you. Thank you for your, your help, your work that you've done in preparing for this evening and joining My us pleasure. tonight. We really appreciate it. And throughout the evening, you're going to have, we're going to play a little game. Make it fun on the road trip. Uh, did your family ever do that where you had to find signs oh, yeah. with letters and those kind of games? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> like the, the spot it kind of games? Yeah. So I've done that too with my kids and myself. Tonight, we're going to play spot it with TJ McGibbon. So when you see her, count how many times you see her and keep track. And at the end, you can put that in the chat and uh, see if you've caught every time that TJ appeared on your screen tonight. 
So that's a, just kind of a fun game that we're going to do. And uh, yeah, look for, the, for that. But for right now, we're going to go continue on our road trip. And uh, so here we go. There's so much that's going on out there with people that don't have money to live, right? You know, like, I'm okay, but there's a lot of people that's not. There's a lot of people working really, really hard to get what they need to get, right? I worked hard in my day, too. I know what it's like to find a place to live and everything, because, I mean, I've been in expensive places, had to move, and all this stuff over the years. And if somebody would come along and help with these things, maybe things would be different, you know what I mean? So yeah, what, what's, what was your experience like before coming to Endwell? Well, it was pretty rough. I was living from motel to motel. And uh, then I got on welfare and got disability and I moved in here. So, yeah, it's pretty good. It's a lot better than living in the motel. Uh, oh, like you know, with my sister, I have a, just a lot of people. Not right just because too many people, but also just because with the country. I don't have a vehicle to get, get around. So this way I can get around, walk around. I have a three-wheeler bike that's right, so. Uh, I was in a group home at the time, and it wasn't optimal for me at that point, very straightforwardly. Um, I, it, I pay such a reasonable rent here, as you know, rents in Hamilton, everybody knows that, you know, and it's, it would be impossible on my ODSP check to like have an apartment and get by, it would not be possible for me. There's no way I, I could afford a, a apartment outside of this uh, establishment. I got a bag got for an extra. Oh, you got an extra one. That's awesome. What a beautiful surprise. I come from actually working in the homelessness sector in Hamilton. So I was previously working with uh, single men over the age of 19 who were experiencing homelessness in Hamilton. And Indwell is where all of us working in that field really want our clients to end up. So it was kind of a natural progression almost for me because, you know, it was like coming to the place where I wanted all of my former clients to end up living in the end. There is a very long list of uh, people who doesn't have access to uh, affordable housing. And this has uh, created an issue of increasing the homelessness. Market rates are just not sustainable for the average person who may be on uh, assistance, public assistance, or may have uh, precarious employment, may have part-time jobs, even perhaps some full-time jobs. They'd find it very difficult to pay market rents. If we look at um, uh, indigenous people, or women, or people of color, and also people with mental health uh, challenges, that is making it uh, double victimized, I can say, or double challenged for them to access housing. It was a challenge for us and for myself working in that field, um, just finding like safe, affordable, secure housing in this city for folks who are only receiving possibly $700 a month to live on, period. The need for affordable housing is widespread across Ontario. It's not just an urban problem. We're seeing it in rural areas, small towns. The levels of social assistance um, in terms of the actual funds people receive have not been updated in a really long time. So you have cost of living that's like increased exponentially, but social assistance has remained really low. So it's really hard for folks to even just like A, find a place to live that they can afford and B, be able to like you know, pay for food or pay their phone bill. I would say that not everybody who lives with Inwell lives with addiction. I would be willing to bet that every person who does live here has come in touch with addiction through somebody they've known in their life. It's kind of hard sometimes, but uh, like I developed schizophrenia in my around my 20s, so it's like looking back at my teenage days of high school, it's kind of happy. I really don't understand it too much. My past. 
Well, I've been battling alcoholism for a while. I've been sober for over 20 years. I've been to several programs, <laughs> a lot of programs, but it finally worked to just kick in, you know, spending all my money on drinking. I've been 21 and a half years sober now. Uh, and I have had so many mentors and guides along my way. And if it wasn't for, for people that God put in my path, I wouldn't be sober and doing well today. And it's a true blessing, one day at a time. Opioid deaths have been on the rise. There's no question about that. It's doubling year over year. With the border closures, it made it really challenging for people to access their substance of choice. So it not only created kind of a scarcity, but it hiked the prices up. And people have also been like cutting their substances. So like filling the substance with all kinds of stuff that you would never want to put into your body. We're able to provide our tenants with naloxone so we can provide training to staff and tenants with the safe use of naloxone, which can save a person's life in the event that they're experiencing a drug poisoning from an opioid. Addiction is, is a hideous disease. And what we try to do is connect people. The opposite of addiction is connection. Having people that care about you around you in a community of support, that's huge for any any progress that you're, you would hope to make for those issues. You know, I think it can be seen as a moralistic issue when, in fact, we're supporting people who need help. And they need health care. You can't make headway on that if you don't have a place to live that's safe and that you can afford and that you're not worried about losing. Affordable housing is so important. It's the basis to everything. Um, having stability. And if you have stability, you're able to cope a lot better with you know, COVID, mental health, addiction. Without affordable housing, without that stability, the rest of that's gonna affect your life so much more. We often see that just the stability of housing in and of itself is sometimes enough to bring people up to that level of motivation where they can actually start making positive life changes around things like addiction or mental health because they have that foundation of stability that gives them the foundation to work on these things, right? As opposed to just running around, am I sleeping here at night? Am I sleeping here? Like, this person's after me for money and it's, it's a pretty different world. It's like a world within a world, if that makes sense, that sometimes people don't see unless they're a part of that world. Did you catch all that? There's a lot to take in, isn't it? I deeply appreciate the honesty and the vulnerability of our tenants and our staff. Sometimes it's tough work. Each of us has our own unique story that we bring, whether that's a tenant or whether that's a staff person, whether that's you who's watching this, our supporters, our stakeholders, our volunteers. We each have our own story. And sometimes there's cracks in that story. There certainly is mountaintops, and tonight we're going to celebrate some of those. But we hold those in tension knowing that life has valleys as well. And this last 18 months since we got together last virtually, there's been some tough times. I think we're all aware across Ontario of the challenges related to housing. I don't have to step very far out of my door to see people sleeping under tarps in my local neighborhood park and panhandling on my corner of my street. It's been hard. It's been hard through the housing crisis. On top of that, layer an opioid crisis. Some of us have lost friends, family members. I've lost a friend to opioid crisis this year. Community comes with the joys, the, the great points, and the challenges along the way. The beautiful redemptive story, though, is that all of us have a place in this community at Indwell, and that we are not the sum of our deficits. Each of our tenants has a unique story. 
it's fair to say that while not all of us struggle with mental health and addictions, all of us have been impacted by the people around us who have struggled through that. Through this last, uh, through this last COVID period, <coughs> we've had uh, some really low times. And um, you'll hear those in our stories here. But tonight, you're also going to hear about hope. And you've come on this journey about hope as well. Hope to move forward. Hope that there is uh, new opportunities to, to move, move forward into housing. There is solutions when we all come together and work together. On this road tour, or this road trip, you're going to meet some of the people, and you already have some of the 700 people that now live with us in our dwellings here at Indwell. And we have a vision for even more. A vision within the next four, five, six months, we're opening 330 new apartments. Let me say that again. 330 new apartments. So we'll have more than 330 people living in those. If you're just joining us right now, because some of you might not have got here right on time, that's okay. We're glad you're here. My name is Jeff Nevin. I'm the CEO at Indwell, and my co-host, or my co-pilot, what do you say on a road trip? My co-host is... We're not flying anymore. Oh, no, we're not we're flying. Driving. We're driving. Okay. <laughs> I'm Alice Plugbuse. I'm the president of the board here at Indwell. And oh, wait, we got somebody else here tonight. There's TJ McGiven, and she's making an appearance. Put that onto your, your tally if you're keeping track. Thank you, TJ, for joining us uh, once again on, on this, uh, this, this, this road trip. Feel free to ask questions. You can put those in the chat. I'm going to, uh, one more time, look at that to see if any of you, oh, look at this. There are watch parties happening. Uh, this is a really cool one. Uh, I'm excited about this. One of our newest partners is Wentworth Baptist Church, a church that's been worshiping in a building for what, well over 100 years in, 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 in our neighborhood. And uh, we're partnering with, we're actually buying their building so that they can continue worshiping there, we can build housing there. And tonight, as a sign of partnership, I love this. Thanks for joining us, Wentworth Baptist. I'm looking forward to the next 30 years that we can do uh, housing together and building community uh, together. So that's great. And uh, we got some TJ fans tuning in all the way from Brazil and Peru. So thank you for joining us. Um, TJ cares about Indwell. You obviously care enough about her to tune in. So thanks for tuning in. If you want to donate, we are happy to have that as well tonight. Oh, talking about donations, do you see that? Oh, wow. Looks like we're at 30000 already. $30,000. 30, wow. Excellent. And I notice it's jumping by about 10,000 increments. Who knows? We might even be halfway to our 70000 already. Maybe. Yeah. Will you help us tonight to push well past into the speeding zone there? That would be great. Jeff, over the past 18 months, things have been tough here in our world. Um, and people in Peru know that as well as people in Brazil and all over the place. And we are community with them in, in happy ways and also in these difficult mm. ways. Um, and so we're just wondering, I'm wondering, what have things looked like here um, at Indwell over the past 18 months? Yeah, we're thankful, aren't we? Mm. We're thankful for the many, many blessings that we've received. One of those is we've had no major COVID outbreaks. It's been incredible hard work. Our staff, our tenants, our facilities team, our cleaning crew. Shout out to my wife, who's, I think she's the best part of that crew. <laughs> They've worked so hard to make sure that people are safe. And that's what community does, right? We pull in when there's new challenges, we pull together and we make things work. And, um, but we know that there's been hard things too. We've heard that in the video. We've heard about uh, loneliness. We've heard about some of those challenges uh, directly connected to the pandemic. And uh, we grieve that, the isolation, the challenges. And we've worked really hard to come up with new innovative ways uh, 
programs have devices so that people can get online and connect with their doctor and these kind of things. Um, but we're still challenged. Um, we can still use your help. One of the ways that we love to build community is in community gathering meals. And unfortunately, we're still having to do meals as individually served. And that's a bit of a challenge still. We're so looking forward to all those pieces of connectivity and belonging and community building that uh, really help people to, to, to uh, experience belonging and growth. And so we're really hopeful and looking forward to the fulfillment of all those things too. Yeah, as a board, we uh, often uh, get, ev at every meeting actually, we get to hear a story of hope. Um, and we have heard of many opportunities that even during this, this time of isolation that staff and tenants are doing what they can to, to commun have community together even during this time. Other exciting thing is that construction has been able to continue all through uh, the, the pandemic and continuing right now um, as we speak. So we've opened two new programs in just Hamilton alone, um, North End Landing with uh, James North Baptist Church. It was an exciting uh, program that was able to open, uh, as well as McQuestion Lofts next to Parkdale Landing, um, uh, or, as well as the Hamilton Public Library that was able to uh, come into the bottom of that building. So um, just really thrilling to be able to have those construction projects continue and uh, things not slowing down that way. In, indeed, Alice. Um, it's been absolutely incredible uh, with the support and direction of you and our board. Uh, we've been able to respond to the needs. We've been able to come with real solutions. And um, opening new programs, growing staff is very exciting. And those are some of the things that happened in this past year. Mm -hmm. And we have more coming this year. And while some organizations have experienced that they've had fewer donations, we've been really blessed. You have dug deep. Our donations have maintained even slightly increased during this COVID period. So we're really thankful for your continued support. And just a couple of them that I want to point out, because um, I think they're pretty great. Uh, we were deeply blessed by so much funding for specifically to deal with, uh, with, with, with the pandemic and, and some of those challenges. And I'm thinking of the community foundations who helped mm -hmm. us with that. Other, other donors who said, hey, um, you can redesignate my donation and I'll backfill that later. That was the Cowan Foundation who did that for us. A generous TD grant to help us support with tenant wellness uh, in Hamilton. And then there's some fun things that have had great results like uh, a research grant uh, for the study um, uh, of the University uh, Western uh, in London who was able to do a research project um, and have some great results uh, from, our, from, our, from that, uh, that research project. So we're really thankful for these. Um, speaking of giving, I'm seeing the, the, the speedometer there. And so there's still time to push us up to that $70,000 uh, goal. So that's a great opportunity to shoot us up to that. Yeah, and while we're waiting to hear uh, what else has been coming in, let's get back to the road and uh, watch our next film. So one of these is mine, and that's... Everybody's good to me. I like, and like I do a few things there to make other people happy too. And here's somebody else's. Anthony's is over there somewhere. Um, I do the Christmas trees every year. I put up eight last year. And then we got our Monday night bingo hair. I do that too. I mean, we're, yeah. we're very, very close friends. Nice. We're best pals. We are very best friends. Me and Anne have known each other for a very long time. I have a zucchini. I have kale in here. If you can see it. And I have tomatoes. Good experience. People are nice. Yeah. Like it here. Tell me it's secure. It's great. It feels safe here. It feels good because you can use fresh vegetables instead of buying from the store.
door all the time. <laughs> and how about at the church? Yeah. Keeping the food, so. Oh, with, with serving food? or With, with serving food, yes. Very cool. Yeah, so in the name, like, you know, because that's what Jesus would do, right? He wants us to, to help other people out, so. Trying to help people. That's great. Right. Okay. Yes. We grab your bun, please. Okay. I'll be right back. Yeah. You got guidance counselors and addiction counselors to help you with your problems. And you got medicine, med meds to help with any mind problems you could have or physical illnesses. And uh, I think it's a good, great supportive group they got here. Having my own space, my own safe space and home, peace of mind. I know there's beautiful people that work here. They're so supportive, they're so wonderful. They always make me feel better. Oh, the, uh, the housing is great. Like being in your own apartment and the rent is good. It's affordable. I've never had a finer apartment than this in my life, and I've never paid this reasonable amount of money for that apartment. The staff are really understanding. Everyone's different. There's a big, wide range of age or illness, and their addiction counselor and the things they provide to keep you safe with drug use or whatever problem you have is really good too. I like it's safer than you doing it yourself with instruments that you shouldn't use, right? Like we're sharing needles or whatever, sharing pipes. It's a good place to help you recover from the world. It's better than being homeless. To provide housing for individuals provides a good foundation for making progress in other areas of one's life. We've seen a huge increase in tenants wellness within Hamilton Hall and that's just been awesome to see. Uh, whether they're connecting to a doctor, or addiction support services or mental health support services, uh, that's how they grow in their wellness. A home is not just a roof above your head. A home is a secure, uh, well place that can give you, you know, safe environment for you to maintain your well-being and also to be able to flourish and to nourish, you know, your mental, psychological and physical uh, health. Having a safe place is like the baseline for them. That means that their doctor can get a hold of them, whereas before they couldn't, or their supports didn't know how to contact them, or they wouldn't open the door to someone that they didn't know, but they come to trust us, and then we can sometimes be the in-between person between them and those supports. Yeah, this is my lovely garden oh, here. Oh my goodness. Look. It's about building relationships. It's about uh, long-term, and I really love that about Indwell, is that our tenants are here for years, yeah. because this is their home, but in that process, you, build, you can build some sustainable life-giving Relationship, relationships yeah. where that you become part of the family you become part of their home and they become part of your home and um, and that takes a long time and through the process I've always I've learned personally that you celebrate those little baby steps homeless and encampment to an appointment for housing that's a baby step that needs to be celebrated and will be celebrated next step seeing that person intake and yep. stay the week, yep. right? Not just 24 hours, or whatever, but stay that first week, stay that first month, stay that first year. Yep. Yeah. That's the time where yeah. all the balloons and the poppers should go. Yep. And that, but the good work is the hard work. Yep. And it's, the, but the hard work is the good work. My first year going anything ever yep. myself. So sure. I love sharing with people and interacting with people and learning stuff. And it gets me outside, yeah. That's right. And uh, sun, vitamin D. That's what my mom said always. Yep. Vitamin D keeps you growing. I might go up to <laughs> My beautiful kitchen here, I love this. Like, it's, uh, everything is affordable for me, you know? Like, I know when I'm in here for the night, I'm safe as I am, right? One thing is I don't want to go to sleep at night because I guess my time is nighttime. That's when I like to do my pictures and all this stuff, right? This one here my friend gave me for my birthday and uh, it took me about three weeks to do it and I loved every moment of that too because one bead at a time <laughs> and there's 70, 72 uh, thousand beads in there. Sometimes you need some support um, to live your fullest life, um, whether that's support with you know budgeting, whether that's support with a meal. Um, mental health impacts all of that. It impacts functioning of every kind. Sometimes a person who lives at the Wentworth program, this is the stepping stone. This is the stepping stone out of homelessness. It's a stepping stone into independence. And that might mean they're here for two months. It might mean they're here for 10 years. It's different for everybody. Some of them do prepare meals in their apartment, but they're alone, right? 
when they are together, it, it's more exciting. They learn to share together, you know, they learn to, I mean, give of themselves. Kenny's problem is that he, he's real dedicated to us at Ingwell. Yeah. He works, yeah. Uh, works tirelessly for us. He has to see the this. Over the last three weeks or so, he's, uh, he's redone every bit of woodwork. And started with a bench over there and he's done everything for us. Oh, yeah, look at that bench. It's and all redone. Yeah. He's a very great lieutenant. Watch the back, we'll show you uh, that Yeah, let's go see it. <laughs> everything on that bench is brand new. Stripped everything right off it, but like these boards were all rotted, split. I replaced everything, brand new bolts. I had somebody, main guy just give me a hand and we put a new plaque on it. Does it feel good to use your hands? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, stuff has to be done. <laughs> 100% end well. I mean, it's made my life possible. The living of my life, the enjoyment of my life, and quality of life, mm -hmm. right? Quality of life, not just barely scraping by. Like, it's not, it's not easy with ODSP, but God bless the fact that we have ODSP, like, holy God, right? But, uh, yeah, I love being here. The one thing I'm hoping to see Indwell do in the future is hopefully create bigger, taller buildings, even bigger than the Dogwood Suites, just massive, huge structures full of, like, 50,000 million apartments just for every single human being on Earth, like, even the ones that even aren't homeless. Even the homeless ones. Yes, even the homeless ones, yes. For everybody, so we all just can live as a family in one big giant building. You know, there's a lot of a lot of good people that care. They're just caring, right? Like they don't, they're not out to get you or be be like a police officer. They're not like out to put you in jail or anything. They just want to help you, and that's what the world needs, right? Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. She's gonna get upset. But Kat is about to buy it. So that uh, film was about solutions and um, what I think was so beautiful about that uh, film is that it's about tenants talking about their solutions as well, not just, not just um, other people deciding what solutions should be. Um, that's a big part of what Indwell is about. We want to hear from each person that's part of the community. Uh, I, yeah, your, my heart breaks when someone like Maxine is just simply longing for a safe place to lay her head at night, right? And at the same time, can be so, I can be so thankful that that is what uh, we are doing together, uh, providing those simple things, a safe place to lay your head down at night, a roof over your head. And then Kyle talks about support, needing, wanting a safe place uh, to be, to be in community and to, to, to be wanted somewhere. Um, and, and so those solutions are uh, being offered through, through what we provide at, uh, in Indwell. And then, of course, we watch Anne doing her gardening and um, others showing how they can share their skills to be a part of this community, to be a part of the solution, not just to have the solution done to people, but to be a part of that, each person themselves. Um, yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Every person is valuable. Uh, every person is needed to create these solutions. Um, and also each one of you, as, as you are watching tonight, as you are being part of uh, this story with us tonight, you are being part of the solution too. Um, and then we can celebrate. We might not be able to celebrate in a barbecue together, um, all of us together, but we watch the tenants enjoying their barbecue and, and, and taking time to celebrate together. And, and that's part of what we can do as well. So your support makes a difference. Um, your support is uh, what allows our community uh, to grow and these programs to flourish the way that they are able to. 
Jeff, tell us a little bit about some of the programs we were... Just like you about. said, Alice, like it's more than just a place to put your head. Uh, hopefully, it's a foundation to flourish and to thrive. And uh, we believe in dignity. And that means that you don't give people dignity. You have the opportunity to affirm people's dignity that the Creator has already given them. And when we see people using their abilities and their gifts, I'm just delighted because that's what thriving and flourishing looks like. So, you know, at the, the barbecue there in Simcoe at Hamilton Hall, uh, to, to what we didn't see on the video is uh, tenants contributed salads and uh, an edible fruit arrangement as, as well. Um, or in London in the music piece that tenants were bringing their instruments to contribute. Um, and at the Wentworth program, the crafts and the lawn games, all these things that are become quite popular during this, uh, this, this season. Um, these are all real ways, they're, they're antidotes to, um, to, to, to loneliness. And uh, we look forward to so much more of art, music, crafts, food, all these things that uh, really bring uh, about community. And uh, along the way, uh, one of you sent me a question. And you wondered, uh, does Indwell offer housing to just individuals or also families? And that's a great question. Um, we do have some families that live with us. And uh, one of the neat things is that as lives get put back together um, and, and there's stability that comes from that, it's often the case that people are able to have their children come back or find a relationship. Uh, often uh, when, when folks have dealt with significant mental health or addictions challenges, it leads to the, the falling apart and the breaking apart of families. And when we get to see those restored, it's quite amazing. And um, many of our buildings actually have uh, two bedroom units uh, for that very reason. As, as life, as the pieces of life, the puzzle pieces come back together and are stitched back together, uh, we see actually indeed that uh, people are forming relationships and, and, and having children. And, and that's just actually a, a wonderful thing to, to see. And it's an outcome of, that starts with stable housing. Uh, the, the start of stable housing, you know, I've never heard somebody say, the best thing for my mental health or addictions is when I got to sleep under that tarp for a year and a half in, in the park. Uh, it has to start with housing, but it's got to be way more than that, too. Yeah, and that's why we need each person tonight, too, to be giving, right? Because it's not big things that people are asking for. People aren't asking for the, the world, mm -hmm. but they are asking for the world, but just the world in which they can have their children stay with them again overnight, mm -hmm. in a world where, where they can just have safety, right? Mm -hmm. And an opportunity to to have neighbors that they can enjoy spending time with and, and um, start dreaming about perhaps a course they can take at university or college or something like that. We're, we're not asking for a, a lot, we're just asking for those simple things, mm. right? And, and that's why every single dollar, even you know the $35 that we just heard that one, one watch party has raised so far, it doesn't seem like much necessarily, but it, it me makes a huge difference, right? Yes. And those $35 will add up and it will add up and will add up. Um, and I, I'm noticing that we're at $40,000 right now. We're over That's halfway to our goal. So, super exciting. Um, yeah, so if you're one of those people that likes to wait till the needle is almost there and then push it into the speeding territory, you don't have to wait that long. You can do it right now too. Um, but thanks for your, your support. Um, Jeff, yeah. we have something to celebrate too. You mentioned earlier on when you introduced yourself that you'd been with Indwell for uh, 20 years. And mm. it's true, this September, this month actually, um, was your 20th anniversary with Indwell. Um, and just on behalf of the board, on behalf of others watching too, I just want to acknowledge that you've been driving this bus for a very long time, right? Um, and we are just so, so thankful to have you at the steering wheel, um, to have you committed, to have you keeping your eye on the road the way that uh, you have been for 20 years. It's incredible, it's amazing. We are super thankful and it's something that we want to celebrate tonight, um, but we will continue to celebrate that uh, over the, the next months as well in different ways. Mm. Thank you, Jeff. Well, thanks for that, Alice. And uh, we all know uh, I've only had a piece of that. Mm. And I'm so deeply grateful for your contribution, the contribution of our staff. I think about uh, my colleague, Daphne, who's mm. the daughter of the founders of Indwell, 
this uh, in August was 20 years for her as well. And so I'm uh, just deeply grateful to have uh, a seat on the bus of the road trip and be surrounded by just such an amazing community, including all those folks who are tuning in today. This is a movement of people who want to see people housed and to flourish and to thrive. That's what we're about. And we each have our piece to play in that. So I'm just deep, full, deeply grateful for that opportunity to be a part of that as well. Um, and we saw that, didn't we, on those videos? Our teams keep growing. We grow, grew into new areas uh, since we last gathered uh, for one of these uh, road trips. And um, you saw uh, on the video Steve there from the region of Peel, who is standing in the middle of our construction zone. And that's at Lakeshore Lofts in Mississauga. And that's opening already in January. So that's really exciting. You also met Scott. Uh, Scott, he's working in Chatham-Kent, and uh, we have uh, purchased an old school there, and we're working really hard to find funding to be able to turn that into a project over the next number of years. So that's a, a lot of growth to the east and to the west uh, along the way. And in the next film, you're going to meet Jessica, who is opening our newest program in St. Thomas. We're launching in just a couple of weeks, and uh, we're about to get going, so we're going to hear from Jessica on that. We're also going to hear from Mark, who's in the Waterloo region, uh, and um, just on Friday, we did a groundbreaking there at St. Mark's Place, and so lots of exciting things. So let's, um, but before we go off to hear that from the next film, we have a bunch of people that we want to thank. Yeah, in all that we do, our partnerships are so critical. And uh, we have 36 sponsors uh, for just this evening. Um, and they have raised um, or supported us, uh, supported this evening with, with uh, the funds so that 100% of the donations that are coming in tonight will be able to go straight to sustaining our programs. Um, so we're going to read them off. We want you to know about them. Uh, we want you to support them in whatever way that you can as well. And just thank you so much to each of these sponsors for uh, what they have done in uh, providing these funds for us and for, yeah, for the ultimate benefit of our tenants. So the sponsors for tonight's evening to make it possible to cover all of our costs for this event. So all of your donations are going to go directly into programming and supports to keep our general operating happening, to keep people uh, supported in their homes. So here is the folks that we are just really appreciative to making that happen. Uh, that's AEL Environment, uh, Mississauga. It's AIM, American Iron and Metal, All Pro Door and Hardware, Anne De Bono of Remax Advantage in London, Arthur Electric Incorporated. We have BDO of Woodstock, CK Engineering, Counterpoint Engineering, Delta Elevators, Edison Engineers London. Icing Greenhouses in Simcoe, Great Northern Insulation. Graceview Enterprises, GRRC Roofing, Hassan Law, London. And thank you to Invisage, as well as to Kalos Engineering, Konia Masonry, Quick Internet in Simcoe, and Landon Mechanical. And to Leon's in Simcoe, you've been a longtime supporter. Love Now Restoration in London, Nevin Custom Homes, thank you family for helping us out. PharmaSave, PRL Guyot Electric. As well as Rankin Construction Incorporated, RBC, Ross McBride in Hamilton, Schilthuis Construction, T. Johns Consulting Group. The Bold Group, Towns and Butchers in Simcoe, Toyota. Upper James Pharmacy, Hamilton, Vortex Incorporated. And Zahn Engineering Incorporated. We're deeply grateful for all of the contributions that you've made. Many of these partners who supported us tonight, you've been with us along the way. Uh, you're working with us on a daily basis often to make it possible to, for us to do what we're doing. So thank you for your contribution again, once again, tonight. I'm just going to check in on the phone messages to see what else is just coming in here. And um, so if you have questions, it's coming to me live, and we will get to those. And this adds to the opportunity tonight, and that's why we're doing it live. So 
feel free to, to, to send in some, some questions as well. Um, one of the questions I have here is, what about other events? Because I mentioned uh, the groundbreaking in, uh, in, in, in Kitchener uh, this last Friday. And uh, well, we have another groundbreaking coming up, and that's in St. Thomas next week. Uh, if you're interested in coming to that, register. There is a cap of 100 people uh, for that event. In London, in October, there's a hard hat party. And again, it's, uh, it's invitation only due to a limited amount of people. But these are things that are happening. There is a grand opening at Lakeshore Lofts in Mississauga that's coming up. So if you're from Mississauga, uh, be sure to look for more information on that. Hopefully, a very belated grand opening for our McQuesten Lofts uh, with our partner, the Hamilton Public Library. But the good news on that one is you don't have to wait for uh, a grand opening. The public library is open, and it's open to the public right now. You can actually go in any time the library is open and see that uh, beautiful partnership and get a taste of the building already right there. And next year, we have a lot of grand openings. In, indeed, we have um, a lot of projects coming online. It's, it's why tonight is actually so important. Uh, with all new projects, if you've ever heard of startups, there's a lot of costs that come, in the, especially in the first year leading up to opening of a project. Um, there's, there's no income often to cover any of those costs. And so that's really this year, if, if there's a way that you could dig in a little bit deeper to help us this year, this year we really need your help. Um, we, we, we've looked at our budget and there's a whole bunch of things this, this year that are coming on because of 330 new units. And so our operating budget needs, needs your help this year to, to, to push through that and get these, these projects all open and operating. And so uh, that's the good news is people are getting housing. So just keep checking in. Check in on our, 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 our emails, our newsletters, our website, our Facebook, social media, and you'll see uh, notices about those, those upcoming pieces. But now we're gonna go back to the road and see another film. Previous to coming to Indwell, I worked in the shelter system in St. Thomas. And so a lot of individuals that are on the list for housing with Indwell are my friends. Um, and so the need is, is very close to me, um, just because now Indwell can offer housing to mm -hmm. my friends. Um, yeah. So it's just so powerful yep. to me that Indwell can come to St. Thomas and offer the supports that my friends need mm -hmm. so that they can get off the street. people who would say, you know, oh, you know, this is life, like, you know, the poor are the poor and the rich are the rich and, you know, everything's fine or, you know, the stereotypes that some folks have of people who are experiencing homelessness, like, it only takes one crisis for any one of us who are, who have never experienced homelessness to be on what I call the other side of the glass. You know, because most of us, you know, don't have hundreds of thousands of dollars in savings that, you know, if we lost our job tomorrow, we could fall back on. In the end, you have to think, like, people are people, no matter what, and all human beings deserve respect and a safe place to live and a chance to really thrive instead of just surviving. Pull this off for a minute. Yeah, Tenant yeah. corridors. Um, what's kind of neat about this building is we have an atrium in the middle, and so um, we've, we've kept that open. We're going to have um, the sunlight streaming in, and so it allows us to put a lot more apartments on this uh, this building. It's kind of a lower, wide building, and so to get the apartments everywhere and get daylight coming in, we've uh, kept the atrium in place. Here we are on the third floor. It's not quite as far along, but behind me here, this is going to be an open patio area. So this is the outside community area. <laughs> Um, a place where our tenants can hang out and uh, and be within the confines of the building. So it's be really, really beautiful when it's done. 
I really like it now. We are having a full solar array on the roof that covers pretty much every square inch of, of the roof. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to having this one done. In previous life, I did a lot of more commercial and institutional and industrial stuff, and it was it was a uh, it was always really good and fun. But it's so nice doing construction for a greater purpose, like for a reason to build homes for people, and it is just so rewarding to you know that there's a reason to put in your very best and to try and make this work right and to build a beautiful home, build 51 beautiful homes for people. Our vision is hope and homes for all. And that doesn't mean that Indwell needs to do all of the homes and provide all of the hope for people. But um, it's really about bringing together partnerships and spreading that vision to groups and organizations that might not see themselves as part of the solution. Uh, my name is Edward. I'm a pharmacist here at uh, Pharmasave at Parkdale. And we work with Indwell uh, at Woodstock, Hamilton, London, Simcoe, uh, very pleased to be working with uh, such a great organization. Being on premises is such a huge advantage for us and for the, the clients. They come down uh, very easily, so if it's bad weather or they don't feel well or they don't want to go anywhere, it's easy to come down. We have regular interaction with them, so we can keep an eye on things. Uh, if somebody's having a bit of a harder time and they need some help, we can all sort of rally around and help the patient. And it's right on premises, so things happen in real time. It's so, so simple. It cuts out a lot of the friction. It's totally easy. It's, it's, it's working out beyond my expectations, and I say that from the perspective of being able to take care of people, not necessarily from a dollars and cents, just being able to impact people's lives. A unique piece of Indwell's model that has lots of people excited in Waterloo Region, which is being in a community that can support you and encourage you and help you grow and find a fuller measure of health and wellness in your life. Community exists in all of the cities that we're in. Um, so having partners and organizations outside of Indwell brings our people outside of our buildings and engages them in their cities, in the different communities, different parks, different organizations outside and builds connections for them. It's a joint goal. It's not uh, because we are looking at housing not only as putting structures, but also as uh, fighting, you know, a social problem. The impact that Indwell brings to any community where they choose to work diligently towards a social housing project is not only a building that is passive in design and therefore environmentally friendly and mitigating of climate impacts, but also a safe place for people to call home and receive the supports and services that they deserve and need. Next year we'll have over a thousand people living with us, which is a huge honor and exciting. People understand that um, we need to integrate affordable housing with community services and health services if we really are going to get serious about solving homelessness. It's a collective thing, it's a collective goal. We are all impacted by it and we can all play a role. I think uh, there's a lot of sectors that benefit from these projects. Uh, they do take the pressure off our shelter systems. We do want to avoid homelessness in our community. Um, there's an economic driver to this as well, where it does create jobs, employment, uh, the suppliers. It's, it's quite important. We all work together for these projects. As a community and as a region, what we see Indwell provide is innovation in the sector, but also collaboration in the sector. And as we're tackling the problem and the crises of affordable housing, what Indwell does by their rapid development process is open up spaces much more quickly. And that enables municipalities and social housing providers to work through those you know, backlogs of wait lists of individuals who are trying to get into dignified and affordable housing. So we see results in the communities that Indwell is doing their work. I have, you know, so much respect for the people that I work with because it's, you know, it's an unimaginable amount of work to have to do and put in to just, you know, get to a place that some of us are just given. It's, it's tough, for sure. There is a need for these services, and I'd say that it's a humbling honor to be involved in the process of walking alongside an individual in their journey to wellness.
good work is the hard work. That film, yeah, I'm sure it touched you. Um, Jessica was really vulnerable right at the start. Um, she, she talked about how Indwell uh, has offered housing and support to her friends. These are real people. These are real friends that we're talking about. Uh, thank you, Jessica, so much for, for sharing in that work and for being a part of that. And then, yeah, we heard Peter sharing about um, how he's been involved in construction for a long time, but now working with Indwell, it's, it's construction for a purpose, for a real greater purpose. Um, and that really makes us give our best. Just simply amazing. Um, and then uh, Edward used to be on the board, um, now running pharmacies in a number of different locations in Indwell buildings, bringing community in um, as well as uh, supporting uh, tenants right there so that they can get that medication right there, uh, don't need to travel for it. Um, and then my neighbor, Councillor Nan, uh, who works tirelessly to uh, support affordable housing uh, in Hamilton, um, working as a, yeah, an example uh, to, to others, too, across, uh, across our regions. Thank you so much to each one of them um, for the things that they each do and, and the, the depth of, of uh, their passion that they give to it. It's, it's amazing. And we're here with TJ again. <laughs> Thank you, TJ, for being here. Um, think of you as Venya in Umbrella Academy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's, it's a privilege to have you here. Welcome back. And um, just want to... Uh, uh, invite you to share your photo essay yeah. and some things that you learned while you were um, exploring programs um, here at Indwell. Tell us, what did you learn? Yeah, so hi, my name is TJ McGibbon and I am a local actor in Hamilton. Um, I am really passionate about affordable housing and so I'm a huge fan of Indwell. Uh, and I've been volunteering with them since 2016 and I've been an ambassador since 2019. Uh, and I had the absolute pleasure of joining the filming crew at a bunch of the Indwell locations that you've gotten to see in these short films. Uh, during filming, I got the chance to interact with a ton of tenants and staff at the different locations. Uh, and I got to join some of their activities like guitar group, uh, a barbecue, a tea party, and even some jam making. <laughs> and I was also able to talk to tenants and staff about how Indwell has impacted their lives. Uh, the thing I heard from tenants the most was that Indwell had made them feel safe and welcome in a community. I was able to hear them rave about things like big windows in their apartments that they had never experienced in previous housing. Um, and I was able to hear tenants talk about how the staff and community had provided them with support to get the help that they needed, and that Indwell had helped them not only survive, but be able to thrive in their everyday lives. I was also able to hear tenants talk about how Indwell had helped them find a role in their community, whether it be helping cook burgers on the barbecue or woodworking around their area or whether it be making jam. Um, and so at every location I heard about how these activities have helped them create a community that they are so proud to be a part of. For the years that, from the years of volunteering at Indwell, I've gotten to see the difference that they make in people's lives. But being able to hear those stories directly from the tenants was so moving. At the Royal Oak Dairy site, I had the pleasure of speaking with Iman about affordable housing uh, and all of the thought that has gone into that site. And it was so encouraging and exciting to be able to hear about the hopes and dreams for this location and how they not only plan to serve their tenants, but also the community around them. At Prince and Flats, I was able to hear a tenant speak about his experience with unsafe housing, mental health, and how Indwell and their supports truly have changed his life. And just a little bit ago, you heard Jessica, the project manager at St. Thomas, um, talk about how excited she was that Indwell was going to be able to come into her community and help her friends. And I've also gotten the chance to make a lot of friends with neighbors who are experiencing housing insecurity. Uh, and so I resonate so deeply with Jessica um, because Indwell has helped so many of my friends here. One friend particularly, uh, found themselves homeless, and I got to watch them go from a tent in my backyard to the waiting list to their very own apartment at an Indwell building. And then I got to watch them reach their first week, month, and their first year at Indwell, and the difference that that made in their life was so profound. And I am so excited for Jessica's friends that some of them get the chance to experience that. While touring Royal Oak Dairy, Iman said that a home is not just a house, but it is a safe, livable environment. I think Indwell has done one better, <laughs> and they not only create safe and livable homes for people, but they create such a wonderful community. 
a community that makes you feel welcome and included no matter what role you're playing, whether you are a tenant or a staff member or a volunteer. And this community that they continue to foster is incredibly beautiful, and I am so grateful to be a part of it in any capacity. Thank you so much, TJ. Uh, it's, it's just inspiring to, to hear you speak, to hear you share the things that uh, you've learned. Um, as a mom, that just touches me as well, right? As I have kids that are your age, actually older than you, and they've started traveling off on their lives. And, and those things that um, TJ is, has shared are just, you know, the same things that, that we as parents want to see our children witness as well, um, the hard things, but within that whole value system that we're able to share with our kids to, to set them off on, on a path towards, um, yeah, living into those values that we've, we've done what we've tried to do to, to instill into them. Um, yeah, it's, it's inspirational to, to hear from TJ and just uh, exciting to, to think about how all of our young people can be growing up within that and can... Um, each make a difference uh, in, in lives and care deeply, just like TJ is doing. So, yeah, it's exciting. Thank you so much, TJ. Jeff, you're back. How did that happen? <laughs> Where did TJ go? Good. Oh, it just disappeared off the set. Yeah, Alice, um, and thank you, TJ. Um, uh, there's a little thing, I don't know if we're allowed to let our uh, road trip uh, members here know, but we we didn't find out that TJ just turned 16 and she doesn't even have her driver's license. So we have this beautiful graphic, which I think is kind of foretelling of the future <laughs> yeah. rather than the past. And uh, that's just a little bit of fun. But uh, thank you, TJ, for the amount of hours that you put into uh, going around to all the sites and the way that you interacted with our tenants and with uh, our staff and others. Um, uh, of course, we thought you were far older than 16 because of that, and so thank you for that. She promised us that she didn't drive any of the vehicles that uh, she traveled in, so this is just a picture of her future. Well. <laughs> Wonderful. We do have the bingo sheet, and we're hoping that uh, um, people have completed it. I don't know if Jeff has heard of anybody who has hit bingo already, um, but if you did, um, I hope you um, gave yourself an extra treat to celebrate. Um, and we do want to know um, who of you think you know the number of times that TJ showed up uh, in film as well as on our set here today. The correct number... Are we giving that away already? I think so. We're on to that. Okay. Put, it, put your number in quick, real quick, into the chat. And then... The correct number, drum roll, is 18. 18. So you can see the chat. Uh, hopefully you can see. I hear it's a very robust chat tonight. Lots of dialogue going on there. So maybe you were close. Uh, maybe you won the, uh, the bingo already. Um, I'm, I'm still, I'm waiting to hear who... What's the prize for the person who got the closest to the 18? Gold star? Yeah. Just, I don't know. Recognition, yeah. glory. You're awesome. Yep, that's pretty great. <laughs> Extra treat. <laughs> there we go. Um, well, we're going to look back right now at our speedometer. Uh, it's holding pretty steady here at $40,000. Um, we have, have a way to go yet to bump that up to, to $70,000. So if you're still considering, uh, maybe you haven't worked out the details, a good opportunity is to, whoa, it just jumped there. Did you see Whoa, that? Yes, $50, we're starting. $50, yeah, we're we're moving into, we're we're moving out of neighborhood speed uh, territory here. Yeah. We just hit some yeah. of the primary we arteries. Mm -hmm. Yep. So um, there's still opportunity. Uh, and if you want to just send in a pledge, if you haven't figured out, hey, uh, how can I get that money to you today? But maybe uh, maybe it's something that you can do a week or so from now, or. A month from now you want to send in a pledge that's good too uh, so make sure you send that in but uh, I did hear that if we hit that 70 at this evening yet then then there's gonna be like police showings and things like that oh like I don't know you might... think that's what happens if we hit high speed I don't know I'm hoping I'm hoping I'm hoping we get fines tonight <laughs> that would be fantastic um, a couple other things thank you for joining us if you uh, registered early we sent you some really uh, neat things in the mail. One of those is this, um, the, this air freshener. If you got a car, you can put it in a car. 
If you're like TJ and you don't have a car, you could hang it off your moped or your backpack. Um, or maybe just hang it off your bathroom mirror. Um, but one thing that, if, if, that you can do with this, if you're uh, a praying person, um, and I know many of you are, um, this might be just one of those signs that every time you see it, just remember us in your prayers. Uh, say a prayer for, for our staff. Say a prayer for our tenants. Um, and, and so hopefully this will just aid you in a reminder that we need your prayers. We've been asking for your funds tonight, but we also are asking for you to continue to remember us in, in your prayers. The, the other thing that we got uh, uh, on, the, on the go tonight is um, this really cool road trip soundtrack. And so we asked our staff to contribute some songs and some music to a playlist, and they have. And uh, so if you got this, there's a QR code. Um, I'm sure you can find it some way on our, uh, I think we'll put it into the chat as well, that you can, you can find this, or you can find it on our website. So that'll be a lot of fun listening to that on your next road trip. And I'm getting uh, some more, uh, I'm gonna check back in here. And wow, um, we, I think our speedometer might be a little bit behind right now because I'm reading here. Is that right? Is that $80,000 that has come in? <laughs> wow. <laughs> so our speedometer is behind. We, Technology glitch, but we're okay with that. That's a, that's a good one. So we are deeply grateful that you pushed us into the 80000 Thank you for continuing to journey with us. We really appreciate it. I'm going to click over to you, Alice, for a uh, final wrap-up here. I'm feeling a little speechless right now. I, I hear you. I'm still waiting to hear police sirens, but I'm not hearing any. Oh. So I... There wow. it is. $80,000. $80, it's true. It really happened. Wow, that's amazing. Do we say thank you for joining us now? I just want to sit and hang so. out some more. I do. I just want to revel in this fact yes. that we just pushed over the goal and over $80,000. Wow. So thank you Incredible. so much. Take a moment of silence before we say thank you. <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you so much for joining us. As we're just still closing out, I just want to uh, give a shout out to John Butler, who's the filmmaker. He made it very simple and natural for people to chat with him. Um, I think you noticed that there were some deep vulnerabilities that were shared this evening. And um, that was because uh, John just made it easy for people to share. And so um, for those of you who, who did share some of your story, who were vulnerable, thank you so much. Um, and probably as you were watching yourself, you felt some of the emotions coming up again. And, and we, we recognize that, and we recognize your, your pain, We've, we recognize the hard things that you've gone through, and we're just privileged to walk alongside yeah. you, to be part of your life, to be part of your story, and um, yeah, keep being community, um, and, and keep, yeah, letting us be a part of that. We thank you, and yeah, thank you to all of the staff who are so hard at work every day, um, working with our tenants um, daily, the staff that, that work behind the scenes as well, um, and yeah, everybody that's been involved in this whole production, this whole um, film creation. Um, there's a lot of work that got put into that, and, and um, we just thank you. And our road trip's not done, because it's really more of, of a movement of people who believe in something greater than ourselves. And so you're on that, we're on that, mm -hmm. It's a movement that uh, we're not done until we reach that vision of hope and homes for all. And uh, tonight you demonstrated one more time that uh, you're on this trip with us. We're on this journey together. And if you're one of our tenants, know that you're not alone. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're hoping to become one of our tenants, we are hear you. We hear the needs. We're working really, really hard to create a home for you too. Uh, and, um, and, and we, we we feel your pain, and uh, we've heard your stories, and we're, we're motivated to continue to work towards that. The movement doesn't end here. The road trip doesn't end here. Uh, our phone lines are going to be open yet for 
uh, another 15, 20 minutes or so, um, maybe even longer if they're, they're really active. Um, but uh, there's always the opportunity to donate online. And uh, you can call us tomorrow. We'll return your calls if you want to have a conversation about uh, why this donation is important to you. Love hearing those stories as well. And um, so th thank you for that. And if you just joined late um, because you saw one of your friends on social media maybe posting about this and uh, you just got here, you're like, man, what did I miss? Good news, this will all be posted on YouTube with a link through our website. You can watch it after tonight. So that's really great. So, so also for people in other time zones, like my parents living in the Netherlands, I tried to get them to join us, but ah. that wasn't happening because they're fast asleep. But they and others can be watching I across the world. did notice things. that most of our people tuning in were from North mm -hmm. and South America. But so so that tomorrow explains. we there get we a whole bunch of new watchers. There we go. So stay with us. Uh, and so till next time, we're going to uh, figure oh, out where we're going to go next, I think, Alice. Mm -hmm. uh, where, where was it West? West to to London and St. Thomas and Chatham. I, I think as long, I want to As long to go as we make sure we go south too. South. I'm all yes. about sunny south. Yes. Especially and, as and we Norfolk see the winter County. Coming. Yes. Is that south far enough? It's, I don't know if that's south well. far enough for. <laughs> I'll go with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Sounds good all right. to me. And north northwest Kitchener. You know, maybe maybe we go there too. Maybe we can stop there along the way. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. Till next time.